Hey guys, so today we're back with another review of one of my subscribers' cars. His name is Eric, and his Instagram name is at Eric Mellon, so make sure you go check him out and follow him there. He's an awesome guy, big supporter of my channel, and a fellow Mopar enthusiast as well, so I wanted to feature his sweet truck. He's also looking to sell the vehicle, so if you're interested, feel free to contact him on Instagram. So these days, Ram is doing very cool things and has joined the Horsepower Wars by sticking the 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 under the hood of the Ram 1500 TRX, so that effectively makes it a Hellcat Ram with 702 horsepower. But back in 2005, Chrysler was also doing crazy things like sticking a massive V10 Viper engine into the Ram trucks. And that's what we have today, a 2005 Ram SRT10. So let's get into this review, taking a deeper look at this beautiful truck and going into all the nooks and crannies of the vehicle and what makes the SRT10 so unique and impressive. So the Ram SRT10 was created by the new Street and Racing Technology Division from Chrysler, introduced in concept form at the 2002 North American International Auto Show, with the first production vehicle being built on November 10th of 2003. The early origins of SRT started way back in 1989 as Team Viper, where Chrysler selected 85 engineers for the development and production of the first-gen Viper. The next phase was in the late 90s with another team known as Team Prowler, which helped to get the Prowler put together. Those teams then merged to become specialty vehicle engineering, and after 2004, they were renamed to SRT. So the Ram became the SRT-10 thanks to the 10-cylinder engine. The Ram SRT-10 had a pretty short life, with three model years from 2004 to 2006. Since this is a 2005, we can check out those prices. So the regular cab like this one was 47,605 US, while the quad cab was up at 51,810. Next is production and the SRT-10 was produced in very limited quantities. The first year saw 3,057 in total for four different colors. 2005 had 5,113 and this one is just one of 557 regular cabs that was produced in black. 2006 added seven other colors with another 1,973 produced. So all in all, there were just 10,046 Ram SRT-10s, so this is definitely a rare sight if you find one on the road in 2022. Obviously, this is the regular cab version, which is 120.5 inches long. 2005 and 2006 also offered a quad cab version that was 140.5 inches long. And for both, the standard bed length was 6 feet 3 inches. Now let's take a look at the exterior of this Ram truck. The design is so cool because to the unsuspecting bystander, it just looks like another Ram truck with the bold and distinctive appearance and the in-your-face crosshair grille. However, to a Mopar or Ram truck enthusiast, the subtle cues are enough to immediately make you realize what's really in front of you. The SRT-10 has a unique billet grille insert with a body-colored crosshair. The hood is similar to the other SRT vehicles with a wide power bulge and a functional scoop that sits above the grille. Beside the power bulge, you could find Viper power lettering to show off what you had under the hood. Overall, it just exudes a more aggressive attitude. Another SRT-10 exclusive is the rear spoiler on the tailgate, which provides 165 pounds of downforce, as well as helping with airflow and reducing lift and drag. Rick Eros, the vice president of Chrysler Group, probably said it best when he summed up the visual design of this truck, saying, quote, The front end of the SRT-10 combines the new Ram styling cues we created for the 2002 Dodge Ram, with an extra boost of visual power, end quote. Now we'll move on to the wheels. They are stock on this truck, so they're the beautiful 10-spoke design that was modeled from the ones found on the Viper. They are 22 by 10 inches all the way around and came with Pirelli Scorpion P30540 R22 tires back then. The brakes were modified from the Ram Heavy Duty truck with 15-inch rotors up front and 14 inches in the rear. 2005 to 2006 models had four-piston monoblock calipers up front designed by TRW, so that would be like this one, whereas the 2004 models had smaller two-piston sliding brake calipers, so that's one major difference. The truck also has NASCAR-inspired brake cooling ducts that are integrated into the front fascia to try to provide some more cooling. As for the suspension, the SRT engineers used a modified rack and pinion and independent front suspension that was taken from the Ram heavy-duty trucks. Performance-tuned Bilstein shock absorbers and springs help for higher speed performance, and they also lowered the truck by one inch in the front and 2.5 inches in the back when compared to a regular 1500. They also added a fifth shock on the rear axle to prevent wheel hop. Moving inside, there are more cues to let you know that this isn't any ordinary ram. Silver accents are found on the doors, center stack, shifter bezel, and dashboard, and there is the SRT10 logo on the passenger side. The seats are the classic SRT design with leather trim, big side bolsters, and suede inserts that keep you glued to them. 
The leather-wrapped steering wheel was a simple four-spoke design. The SRT10 also gets a white instrument cluster with satin silver gauges and the Viper font and graphics. Just like its Viper relative, there was a sporty red push-start button along with aluminum pedals and a hearse shifter with a Viper shift knob for all the trucks with a manual transmission. All the audio came from Infinity, and all the sound systems had a 10-inch subwoofer that was between the seats and 575 watts of output. Next, we can shift our focus to performance, as of course, that's probably the first reason that someone buys an SRT10. Amazingly, this truck features the same 8.3 liter V10 that was first used in the third generation Dodge Viper in 2003. The same engine is found under the hood of both the regular cab and the quad cab, with a huge 500 horsepower at 5600 RPM and 525 pound-feet of torque at 4200 RPM. And this engine delivers 90% of the torque from 1500 to 5600 RPMs. One major difference between the quad cab and regular cab was that the regular, like Eric's here, have a Tremec T56 six-speed manual transmission, while the quad cab could only be had with a 48RE four-speed automatic that was taken from the Ram Heavy Duty turbo diesel Cummins trucks. Both the regular and quad cabs had the Dana 60 rear axle. So obviously, Eric's truck is the regular cab, which was by far the more performance-oriented of the two. The quad cab was definitely a cool option for buyers that wanted the sweet combination of the Viper and Ram, while also getting extra room and better towing capabilities. So that quad cab had a 4.56 final drive gear ratio and a 7,500 pound towing capacity, while the regular cab wasn't rated for any towing at all due to the clutch and rear spring rates. But otherwise, the regular cab was quicker and lighter. It weighed 5,130 pounds, which was some 500 pounds less than the bigger quad cab, which was 5,618 pounds. Lighter weight also meant better gas mileage, so 9 city and 15 highway MPG versus 9 city and 12 highway MPG for the quad cab. Finally, the lighter weight also meant some slightly better performance times, as the regular cab could do 0-60 to 60 in 4.9 seconds with a quarter mile in 13.6 seconds, while the quad cab could hit 0-60 to 60 in 5.3 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.7 seconds. The top speed was also faster, 154 miles per hour, compared to 147 miles per hour on the quad cab. As for my final thoughts, this truck is simply a joy to be around. As a Mopar enthusiast, it really put a smile on my face and it's outrageous to open the hood and see that Viper engine in there. When compared to the other SRT8s of the era, it definitely holds its own and has very similar performance times due to the bigger engine and extra power. And plus, it's one of the few SRTs that offered the manual transmission along with the Viper and Challenger. With a sub 5 seconds 0 to 60 time, you can really blow the doors off a lot of cars with your big truck. The SRT seats are fantastic as you'd expect, and at full throttle the torque is incredible and the acceleration was better than I expected for a truck. The higher ride height also adds to the sensation. With just over 10,000 produced, this is a truly special truck, and those that are lucky enough to own one or drive one are glad that Chrysler was in a position to be able to combine the Viper and Ram 1500. A huge thanks goes out to Eric once again for the opportunity to review his amazing SRT10, and make sure to get in touch with him if you're interested in purchasing it. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed that in-depth look at the 2005 Ram SRT10. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar and car content and I'll see you guys in the next video.